Okay, today's topic. Today's topic we're going to talk about is, man, we got to forget these crystal balls and we got to embrace chaos, right? When you look over the last couple of years and you look at the continued uncertainty that we see, you see the continued uncertainty around talent. You see the continued uncertainty in the investment community. Um, in the United States, we're coming across a election year, which always drives a lot of uncertainty. I have my sister. She actually works for the government. And uh, we were talking yesterday and she was telling me about, you know, how they're starting their planning processes and doing a lot of stuff. But there's really not a lot you can do when you don't know who the next president's going to be. So as we sit in this stage and this this chapter, I would say, of continued uncertainty, it's important for us as finance, FP&A, CFO, fractional CFO professionals that are advising our clients to make sure that, hey, man, we got to embrace this chaos. So that's what today's topic is going to be about. Um, I want to jump into the first element that everybody needs to consider when you're embracing uncertainty, you're embracing challenge. Um, and this is this is really something that I've honed down in leading high growth businesses, as well as what I have my team focused on is the first element to embracing chaos and, and embracing this change and this ambiguity is going to be striking the right balance between accuracy and precision, right? So a lot of times, you know, some of our clients, one of our clients that we have, they were a retail client. They're about a $35 million retail client. Uh, they're based in the U.S. And one of the things that we got into the conversation with with, our, with the CEO at the client was they were like, Chris, man, we need a we need a three and five year plan. We need to work through this stuff. And I sat back and said, OK, what are we trying to do with this three to five year financial plan and financial model? Like what what kind of certainty, what kind of uh, information like what are you trying to gather from this? That's going to lead to value, right? And to me, his business, uh, very, it, you know, retail, retail e-commerce, it, it's a, that is probably one of the most seasonal, depending upon what you sell, it's one of the most seasonal businesses. And definitely when we look over their business's seasonality, there are definitely quarters and months where seasonality sub, like significantly changes, right? And it's a lot of unpredictability into it as well, too. So my pushback was, is a three to five year plan? Is that like going to give you some like confidence interval? Like what, what do you, what are we really trying to solve and what are we really trying to get out of this plan? So part of me pushing back to this accuracy and precision is balancing that, right? When I think of accuracy and this is how I'll define it and this is how I define precision as well too. So when you, when you ever hear me talk about this, um, accuracy is going to be like that 75, I would say like 70 to, you know, 85% confidence interval that this is going to be directionally where we're going to go. Right. So a great example of this, if you're, you know, with our client that we were working with, I said, look, the most important thing that we probably need to look at in our business is not the next 36 to 60 months, right? Like a three to five year plan. I said, we need to make sure we balance precision and accuracy in the next 12 to 18 months. So let's reduce the timeline and let's get really specific on where we want to have precision and really specific on where we want to be directionally accurate. So that accuracy piece, when I think about it in a, in a 12 to 18 month timeline, right? Months one through, I would say, three and four, you want to be precise, so let me define that precision aspect of it. Precision, this is where you're 90 to 95 percent confident that the metrics, the plan, the execution, the strategies, the tactics that you laid out are going to execute towards uh, the financial model that you set. Precision is, is vital. And typically in a really high growth business that has a lot of uncertainty, has a lot of seasonality, which is the retail client that we serve at Fresh fp &A, I said, we want to be precise on our cash burn. We want to be precise on our customer acquisition costs. We want to be precise on our expenses. And we want to be precise on our revenue in that first three, one to four months. That's where we want to have precision. <clears throat> Then in months five, I would say through eight, that's where we want to balance accuracy, right? This is saying that, you know, months five through through eight, we want to be directionally accurate. Like we want to make sure we're not having huge deviations. 
And then outside of months nine through whatever, <laughs> that, that's the best guess. Like I, a lot of times I sit there and say like months nine and later out, you may like, you're constantly going to, and one of the things about the models and, and, and this accuracy and precision is every month you're always factoring new information. Always. Basically what this is called for a lot of my finance, FP&A, CFO, and fractional CFO professionals, this is going to be like a rolling forecast, right? Whether that's a rolling forecast on your cash, whether that's a rolling forecast on your revenue, or whether that's a rolling forecast on your expenses. So as you we get new information, we're constantly updating and that forecast is running forward. So we're constantly getting new information in the business. We have a new month of precision. We have a new section of accuracy. And then, like I said, that nine throughout, we're constantly reevaluating that. So to me, when you're navigating this uncertainty and challenge, that's one of the most key things to focus on is that precision and that accuracy balance and being realistic, right? Like, again, that pushback to the client was, what kind of confidence are we going to have in the next three years, right? And Here's another piece of it that I want to add to that accuracy and precision aspect of it. Think about in the business, all the resources that you're going to have to engage to do this three, five year plan that maybe after six months doesn't even really make sense. Right. Think about the salespeople you're going to involve. Think about marketing. Think about HR, think about operations, think about all the different resources inside the organizations that have to provide insights into this five, this three to five year plan, right? So that's also a fundamental thing to think about because that time, energy, and effort at those resources level could be more focused on being precise in that one to four months that you want to have, like for sales. Hey, I want to make sure we're as precise on the amount of leads that we generate, the amount of opportunities we have, the amount of opportunities that we close. Like, I want to make sure we have a healthy pipeline. So where I'm going to focus my time, energy and effort and precision on is that pipeline management and that pipeline funnel and making sure we're getting clients through different stages. Right. Same thing on the HR side. So that's really one of those first pieces. And I get it. You may say, well, Chris, like, we're a very stable business. Maybe a three to five year plan makes sense for us. Totally. I'm not saying there's not at there's not advantages and there's not opportunities to do those plans. I'm just saying make sure you set the right expectations of what those plans are meant to be, right? So if you're going to do a three to five year plan and you've got a business that has a lot of seasonality, it's changing, you know, as a finance leader or the CFO or the fractional CFO, that six months, that plan is going to be completely different. Make sure when you're working with your business partners, make sure when you're working with that CEO, that owner or that founder, you're setting the right expectations of what that plan is meant to, to communicate and what it's meant to do, right? And a lot of times if we're working a three to five year plans, I'm like, this is aspirationally where we want to be. Right. Like if we have the perfect set of assumptions that fall, this could be the, the perfect set of, 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 of areas we're going to be in a low, medium, high. I also look at it from a scenario perspective. Like if all these assumptions go right, if we get the right number of clients, we have the right number of customer acquisition costs, we have the right number of customer lifetime value, we have the no right number of revenue growth, we have the right number of expense optimization, we have the right number of cash flow, we have the right number of cash runway, this is potentially where we could be, right? And I was, and I would always say, this is the best information that we have, right? I would not take a three to five year plan and, and go to Wall Street or go to the newspapers and say, this is what we're going to do, right? So those, they definitely have their role. They definitely have their value, but it's most important to set that clarity and that expectation up front of what the intention of these models are meant to be. So that's the point number one that I want to talk about specifically 